Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. We'll scroll on down to school, and we are on a new lesson. So we've looked at display objects so that we can see things that we're working with. It's a very visual thing to work with Creative Coding. And then we talked about how to configure these things that we're seeing, these components and shapes, and also how to animate them. In the mean, meanwhile, we are configuring them with this thing called an object literal, which is raw JavaScript. We love using an object literal. In other languages, they have, uh, they're called associative arrays, or hashes, such as in PHP, for instance. But here we call them object literals, and allows us to make a blank object and add properties to it. And we can pass those in in Zim as parameters, or as a single parameter, or we could use traditional parameters. So we saw functions, parameters at that time, and of course we also dealt with our own uh, created functions. So we saw how we could create functions, set up functions to happen when events happen. We saw the anonymous function, function literal, etc. So we've been doing a lot of coding. Now we're going to move into a more of a conceptual uh, lesson, and that is on abstraction. Abstraction is very important in, in programming, so I thought we'd drop out of coding itself and talk almost philosophy. Are you ready? If we go into the lesson, you can do this too. Follow along if you want. We have a couple pictures of abstract art. What abstract abstract art is, is the details have been abstracted, taken out, uh, and we're left with something that is more simple, and hence uh, I find very beautiful. So these are Hollander Maui photographs. It's, um, it's a woman, and these are the dandelions, of course. And when we abstract, it can kind of represent any dandelion. It's not a specific dandelion, and we don't have to worry about all of the specific deal details here. Cool. Let's take a look at the creativity framework. I'm going to go there now, and here's this guy, Dr. Abstract. That's him. I don't know what's happening here. Something's being pulled out of his brain, perhaps. And the creativity framework reveals the mechanics of creativity, so how creativity works. Here's how we get there. Uh, this guy, Dan Zen, Dr. Abstract, has been doing a lot of creativity in his world. So here are various reviews from people that are saying, yes, uh, this Dan Zen is very creative. Uh, but uh, there are also 50, 50 more. <laughs> Let's pause and read them all. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, they they go on. Now, one of the neat things is is this is creativity, but the technique that we're using is based on hierarchy. It's based on object-oriented programming, which is what we're using when we code JavaScript. So I'd like to take a look at some of the basic definitions that can help us as as we move forward. So we'll go into the framework here. The creativity framework is broken down into two parts. Uh, one is context and one is content. These are very important. So here's the creativity framework, this box, and here's context and content. We also represent that. We represent it here with boxes, but we also represent it here with a tree diagram saying we have one thing, which is the framework that is made up of context and content. And there's Dan going up and Zen coming down. That's the Dan Zen logo. Context is the medium in which we create content. So we probably know what content is. Context is a little bit uh, perhaps more rare. We don't think about it as much. So we're going to talk about that. And a medium, by the way, a medium is something that sits between. You've heard of interactive media that is indeed what we're making. So sometimes it's good to know what the words mean. <laughs> like what, what this is, why is it called that? And a medium is something that sits between hot, cold, and medium. So a spiritual medium sits between the living and the dead. 
and paint and clay is a medium that uh, the artist can use to create it. Context is a medium in which we create content. All right, so there are two parts to the framework. We're only going to look at the sort of the definitions of the, the layout, the, describe the terms of the framework. And that will help us as we code in the future as well. We won't go on to say how we can use this for creativity. So how do how do we actually make content with this framework? But you can you're welcome to read that at any time. All right. So a hierarchy. And some people don't like the word hierarchy because it sounds very rigid and sounds like you've got many bosses. And you know we're all down here at the bottom, and your boss, 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 boss. They're the ones with the money and the power, right? Uh, so some people don't like the word hierarchy, but if you turn it upside down, it's called a tree, and a tree is, <laughs> is nice. It's also the basic form of organization. So a main strength of this hierarchy is showing you the mapping of hierarchies, how we can view them in different ways, because when we view them in different ways, um, things start making sense. Certainly terminology about creativity makes sense, like thinking outside of the box. If we look at a hierarchy as a box, boxes within boxes, then thinking outside the box is easy to understand. Whereas if we say lateral thinking, well, lateral thinking is easier to understand with a hierarchy diagram where we can go laterally across the hierarchy. But let's just, um, we're not really talking about the creativity. Uh, let's just talk about what the hierarchy is. So imagine we've got everything that can be broken down into animals and plants. Animals have cats and dogs. Plants have trees and bushes. I think we can all imagine doing something like this, categorizing, etc. We've done it before. Obviously, we haven't included everything here, but this is an example. So this thing is called a node. So any of these lines here, it uh, their nodes. And the definition of content and context becomes very straightforward if we imagine this as being the node. The content is what's underneath, below. The context is what's up above. So what's the context of trees here? Yes, indeed, plants. In this case, in this diagram, the context is plants. Trees might be also categorized somewhere else in a different context. <laughs> we often think of the context as being in the past, and that means the content is really what's in the future. This is quite philosophical. So as soon as you make content, the note is now, as soon as you make content, it becomes context for somebody else or for something else. Interesting, huh? Uh, over here, this is called a sibling. And uh, if we go up, the up is called the parent and the down is called the children. And indeed, we're, if we put things in a container, we've got a parent, the parent's the container, we've got children. The children is the, the things inside there. So we use some of these words, these terms, when we're doing uh, programming and object-oriented programming with JavaScript. For instance, if uh, another word for this is para, x2, and we've also got super, meaning up, and sub, meaning down. So we have we make subclasses, and we have a super class. So it's, it's good to have a good, clear view of what all this looks like as we go into coding, and especially as we get better in coding and make our own classes and, uh, you know, and, and grow. Other words here are join. As we go up, we join things together. As we come down, we split things apart. This uh, often happens in data. You, we're going to see that you might have a delimited string, and we need to split that up into objects, into hierarchies. Um, and uh, so that's handy to know about as well. These words come into play in real life. When we split things up, when we break things up into its parts, we're analyzing. That's analysis. When we join things together and go up, that's synthesis. Like uh, joining waveforms to make, uh, that's what a synthesizer does. The parts are called aspects. So when we break things up, those are the aspects of something. And when we join things together and go up, we gain a perspect. <laughs> so there you go. Some terminology. All these things are called branches. These are called end nodes. 
and this is node zero. That's the first zero, which could be represented as the universe. Organization. When we organize or group, nest, categorize, or classify, we split and join things. And this process is represented by a hierarchy. Uh, some scientists somewhere proved that any network could be represented as a hierarchy. So anytime we organize, it can be represented as a hierarchy. So below we're going to map a hierarchy across many vital organizational systems, starting with perhaps what you did this morning. You took your socks out of your drawers. <laughs> and here's your pants. <laughs> well, all my stuff's on the floor, but <laughs> some of you use these things. Now, these are called sections as well, or boxes. Indeed, they might even be the layout of a web page. Perhaps this is a wireframe diagram of your web page. So if you can sense or see that organization that up here we have the whole page then we've got the header the header has maybe an ad and a logo here is the content area and the content area has story one story two story three do you see how those things are nested inside one another now check this out some of you may have worked with html before if you leave the top and bottom line there they are and we're basically getting rid of all the sidelines. And here's the top line of that, and the bottom line of that is right there. And uh, these two things are right here, two things right there. And you put angle brackets around them, and anytime it's the bottom line, you end the angle brackets. This becomes the format of XML or HTML. In other words, XML is just a way to store this hierarchy right here this has the same data. If you get rid of the bottom lines and only keep the top lines and note we keep the indenting, this is one big box that holds two things. The first of those holds two things and the next of them holds three things. This is one big line that holds two medium lines. The first medium line holds two things and the next one holds three things. So indeed when we tab in or when we indent, we are representing this organization, these boxes. If we put bullets on those, we would have, for instance, a table of contents that we, that we know from grade four that that's how we organize things, in <laughs> a table of contents. So do you see why indenting in our code is important? This is exactly the same as indenting in our code. It gives us boxes. It says, when we do a function, here's what the function does. But this function could be sitting inside of another function. Indeed, these two functions are sitting inside this function. And these two functions are sitting inside of our outer function. This happens all the time, and we represent it by indenting our code. If we don't indent our code, we can't see this organization and programming, coding becomes twice as hard. Keep your indents always as you go. Think of coding as half the battle and indenting as the other half of the battle. If you keep those indenting and sort of understand where you are, all of a sudden, instead of having, instead of just like looking at one or two lines, you're kind of going, I know, this is just a part of that, and this is a part of that. And if you can kind of keep those parts in your mind, then you'll know your way around your code. It, uh, you, you don't get lost as easily, and indenting is the way that that happens. So if we connect these lines, if we go down and connect these two things with one line, you see, whoop, and we're connecting this one and this one with a line, and then we connect, we, we go down here and connect those two, we go down here and connect those three, we end up with this sort of directory tree that is how Windows Explorer, for instance, kept track of folders and files. So indeed, our computer folders and files are just a way to store a hierarchy. We have the same amount of things here. We go one thing that holds two things, that holds two things and three things. And often we use little plus and minus signs to open these up. Some coding in Atom, you can collapse things. So you can collapse this section and not have to worry about that. Then you're seeing only these sections. And so collapsing code is sometimes handy as well. 
Here we're going to turn the box, so we rotate the box. We still have the same information, and we erase the top and bottom lines, and we're left with this exact structure here, which is the structure of arrays, indeed nested arrays, or multi-dimensional arrays. And we're going to see arrays in the next lesson. So we're showing a video on abstraction. In the next lesson, we show you arrays. But it's nice to know what abstraction means and what all this organization is, so that when we get to arrays, ah, we understand this is a list, and we can hold a list within a list within a list. Basically, we can hold the same type of data. One array that holds two arrays, this array holds two more, this array holds three more, that type of thing. Now, this is really neat. I wish I had a, a big board and I could draw it for you, but basically, if you take a line from the center of this box, come down and over to the center of this box, and a line from down here and to the center of that box, you get this line to the center of that box, this line to the center of the box. And then you take a line from the center of this box to these two boxes, and you get this, doop, doop. And you take the line down into the center of these three boxes, boop, and you get that. So this is a direct mapping of these boxes. And we recognize data like this in a hierarchy, and we certainly recognize data in boxes. But we don't always realize that there it's the same data, that we're holding the same information there. So this is called a hierarchy diagram. And we actually represent our object-oriented programming like this. With class, this is the display class, and of the uh, children of the display class is, would be a container and a bitmap and uh, things like that. Children of the container would be a button and a slider or a triangle. Well, those could be shapes, you know, etc. So we could represent our uh, abstraction with this hierarchy diagram. Now when we put content in there, so letters at the bottom, A, B, C, D, E on the leaf nodes, and we represent the division of these at this level with a tilde, and at this level with a karat, we can go A, karat, B, tilde, C, karat, D, karat, E. A, karat, B, tilde, C, karat, D, karat, E. This is in line. You see how it's in a straight line? It's marching along in formation. March, 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 in formation. It is in formation. This is what information is. It is delimited. These things are called delimiters. It's delimited code. Another word for this is code that will turn into a hierarchy of meaning. We get meaning from the hierarchy, from the structure. So uh, that helps us anyway. It organizes the structure, our thoughts. This is information. It's also language. In our language, the delimiters are things like periods, commas, spaces delimit the words, paragraphs delimit bigger thoughts. That's our language. Our language is all in the straight line. We read it in a straight line, maybe from one line to the next line to the next line. But as we go, we split that stuff up in our head to apply organization to what we're reading. Now, if we turn this hierarchy upside down and make it curvy, then isn't that nice? Now it's a tree. And we keep the same delimiters there. That looks like a tree. Now imagine we're looking up the trunk of a tree. So this is a big, fat, round trunk. And we're looking right up the trunk. And we see how it splits into two parts. We'd see a circle, a big round thing for this, this branch, and a round thing for this branch. Then, as it got to here, we'd see a round thing for this branch and round thing for that branch. This round and that round are sitting inside of this big fat round. And this big fat round is sitting inside of this even fatter round. And this side splits into three things. Here's what we would see. There we are looking up the trunk. We see two branches. We see two more branches and three branches. Obviously, the same information as our boxes, but now they're round. And we really get the sense of nesting here, don't we? It also looks like cells. Doesn't it look like cells? And a group of cells is called an organ or an organelle.
neat. And we can get this we can get this information right here. We can draw this structure just by knowing the delimiters. Karat tilde, karat, karat. We read this. Karat tilde, karat, karat. And we can rebuild this structure. The karat tilde, karat, karat, that's called code. That's the code to rebuild cells, to make cells. The code to make cells is called DNA. Neat, huh? So those comma delimited code that can create cells. Now, if we put the uh, the node zero, the big uh, the big box, the holder, if we put the holder in the middle, and we branch out radially. This is called a radial hierarchy. And we could have more branches as well. This has one big thing that holds two things. And that two things hold two things, and this holds three things. This is a radial format. It's, it's like a mind map, or a mind map is a radial hierarchy. And uh, mind maps are cute. It's just, like I said, a radial hierarchy. It's, it sort of saves on space. Rather than making this big triangle-type shape, it goes out radially. Indeed, if we did it in 3D, then it would be even more space-saving. And that's what our brain is like. So our brain has these things called axons, which are these long parts. And then at the end of the axons are dendrites. Dendrite means tree-like structure in Greek. So we've got this tree-like structure on the ends. And it's not like our brain is a single hierarchy. There's all sorts of hierarchies going on in our brain. But at any one given time, I think that there is a single hierarchy. There's a single hierarchy of connection that keeps moving around. And we keep on parsing, as it's called parsing, when we divide up and we divide up something, we parse it, and um, we can encode it, we decode it when we put it together in a string, we parse it to get out. I think we're parsing and and um, uh, pruning, and we're moving one hierarchy chain to another uh, hierarchy, and that is constantly on the go. And perhaps that one place that it's reporting to in our brain is, well, what do we have in our brain that feels like it's one place, that's one thing? Our consciousness. Cool, huh? So this is the creativity framework, and we've been talking about the mappings of organizational systems. Can you see how powerful this is? <laughs> and every industry deals with organization and it has its own terms. We call it taxonomy and, and teaching. And, you know, anyway, it's um, if you look at what you know, you'll probably find that uh, organization fits into hierarchies of some sort. It, it better that the opposite of organization is chaos. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. One day we're going to organize into a big hug. Now, in the creativity framework, there's a, a, an e-learning app, we'll call it, where you can drag these things and recreate. Sub was, where was sub? Ah, I got it. Specific. Right, I forgot to say, when we go down, we get more specific, and when we go up, we get more general. Here's the general. These things are called branches. And these are end nodes. Para means next to. Which way are we splitting? Going up or going down? Yeah, going down. And the node was, which way is in the past? The past is the context up here. This is node zero. Now they're supposed to snap in there. There, that snapped in there. I don't know. Oh, there's the past. There's joining. So you do that. Now, if there's a bunch of you in a workshop, you can go to the multi-user version, which is a lot of fun because then everybody can do this together. And by the way, this was made in Zim, which is the, the framework that we're learning JavaScript in. So this is all JavaScript based. It's a multi-user, well, could be multi-user. You press it. Application uh, to rebuild a diagram. It's kind of fun. This next one is along the same lines, except we're practicing the isomorphisms. So uh, you, you don't say, hey, here's a circle, here's a circle, here's a circle. There's four quadrants. So you don't put all the circles here and all, all the squares here and then all the little sticks there and all the curly cues there, because where would you then put the brackets? 
You see what I mean? There's actually more different types than there are quadrants. So the idea is only one circle will go in here and only one, the matching data, uh, curly Q will go there. And does this one go here? No. Does this one go? Oh yeah, that one goes there. Does no. Uh, what about these? No, we don't need any more circles. Ah, there we go. So these are called the isomorphisms of hierarchy. Do you like that? Iso meaning the same, but then they morph their shape. Isomorphisms of hierarchy. And there we go. So now one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's all the different types. And now we have to do the, the bigger ones. So here's one that has one thing that holds two things. Each are holding two things. There, that matches. This one does not. Uh, this matches right there. So getting used to which ones match and which ones don't. Where's the, the, the big long statement? Not that one. A, B, uh, not that one, not this one. Is there another A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B? I see it. <laughs> it must be one of these things. Yeah, one of these three match. So look for the karat in the middle. Uh, or is it the tilde in the middle? Here it is right here. Here we go. So A and B are A and B, and C and D are C and D, and they're all kind of in the one thing. So that's the one that matches. And once you get it, it will tell you, hey, you got it. All right, so there's much more to the framework than, than that. It starts talking about the meaning. This one's kind of important too. Perhaps we could just quickly take a peek here. This is composition. Composition is ands. So now we're looking at ands going across the, uh, the hierarchy. So a page has numbers and titles and paragraphs. Composition. So the hierarchy with composition going across. Then here is classification, ors. So sports, you, you either play hockey or you play soccer or you play tennis. You don't have on pages, you don't have numbers or titles or paragraphs. See what I mean? You could actually say sports is composed of hockey, soccer, and tennis, but that would be recreating the classification by using composition. <laughs> composition is reality. It's the parts of something. It's like, hey, you're in your room, and your room is in your house, and your house is in your city, and your cities, and etc., all the way to your planet in the in the uh, what is solar system, in in the galaxy, in the galaxy cluster, in the universe. That's composition. Classification is more of a uh, related to properties and it's a construct that that we do they are types of things and then you have a mix as well so have a look at that flexibility last last slide promise <laughs> we'll get back uh, flexibility some people don't like um, the idea of a hierarchy because it sounds so rigid but let's just show you how flexible it can be almost too flexible for instance with composition there's a house, here's a bedroom, here's Dan, Dan Zen. I'm in the bedroom. So the bedroom is now currently composed of me. But in time, I actually move to go to the workshop. So <laughs> even though hierarchies sound like they might be rigid, um, things can move. So composition-wise, anytime something moves into somewhere else, uh, we're changing that hierarchy. So it's um, there you go. Uh, classification is, is just a wonderful concept. So here's node zero. Of everything, there's inventors. I am an inventor, so I'm classified under inventors in the universe. There's also male inventors, and there I am, and I'm from Hamilton. There's inventors who are male, Hamiltonian, and there's Dan. There's also males, and there's Dan. So you can just keep taking any property of me. There's people with eyes. Well, there's me. There's people with blue eyes. There's me. You can take any property out and dangle it up above as a classification or as, a, as the context. So what you end up with is context going all the way down and you've taken out all of the content. I'm completely empty. There's nothing left. I'm completely described in content. I've fallen on the floor. There's nothing in me. Blech. Or you can add them all back in, go up the hierarchy, and then you say, once you get to here, there's me, 
Dan classified directly under node zero. I am full. I am complete. That is me. And I am directly at one with node zero. Does that sound familiar? The hierarchy clearly shows it. So there we go. And this guy Einstein said, hey, you know, from me, from here, from this Dan, everything else can be classified under Dan, the distance from Dan. <laughs> or, or you. You know, isn't that great? It's relative. Now do you see why I wanted to do this final slide? But this um, perhaps has been a little bit of a diversion here at Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. But I think you'll realize that many of the words that we just saw, or the concepts that we just saw, can be applied as we code. And as we code, as we code, we are also philosophers. We are modeling life. We're building games that simulate life. We're building simulations. We are making AI, artificial intelligence. We're exploring how life is logically put together. That is philosophy. And we are philosophers, all part of a philosophy called nodism. Do you like it? So this creativity framework was built on the philosophy of nodism, and you <laughs> are a member. Do you know what a member of the Notice philosophy is? You're part of the Notice colony. <laughs> the Notice colony. There you go. And you can uh, join in. Here's what fun can happen when you're part of the Notice colony. One, one, go. Touchy. Touchy. And touch the wrong target. <laughs> Touchy soon turned to grabby. <laughs> Squeezy. <laughs> Kicky. <laughs> so what do you think about that? Huh? That's a game called Touchy, where you try and touch each other's mobile device. And that was created in, in Zim and up on the Apple stores and the Android stores. Um, right. Yeah. Neat, huh? It's called Mediated Reality. So mobile mediated. The mobile device is sitting in between you, or the player, and the actual game. So the game's not in the device, but it acts through the device as a medium. Do you like it? That's neat, huh? So what we're going to do is we're going to come back for the next video. We will take a look at how to do this in practice. So we'll be back into our code and we'll talk about abstraction. Then we'll move on to the next lessons, uh, which includes certainly still uh, working with abstraction, especially with things like loops and uh, and arrays. All right, so um, see you later. If you're still with us, if you're really enjoying this kind of stuff, welcome to join us at zimjs.com slash slack. Anybody is welcome. Come on in. Ciao.